Welcome back to The Angry Teacher. I'm Richard Williams, and today I'm going to give you four grading hacks that you can use to make grading seamless. Hang around. We're going to learn today. And we've got all this other paperwork to do. We get overwhelmed. Don't worry about it. We're going to handle that today. We're going to get some stuff done. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the little bell for the next Angry Teacher video release. It's going to be dope. Now, number one, the, the first hack is put things in group. Don't try to do too much individual stuff. Have them work in groups. Now, we can do that as presentations. They can do PowerPoints and present it, or they can just present something, a part of something that they've read. They can also do... Um, you can also have them do chart papers. They meet huddle in a group and they draw whatever write whatever um, Part of the text and do that assignment or they can do it digitally and send you parts or they combine the parts as they Work together off, you know line or whatever as homework and then they send the finished Presentation or document to you With that said it helps you grade everyone and then you can have an, a survey at the end or a part of it that they can say who didn't do whatever or who did what and you can grade that way. It's easier to grade six people all at once instead of six individual projects. All right, that's step number one. All right, so grading at checkpoints versus at the end of everything, or if you grade parts and at checkpoints, at the end, it's easier because you've already been to the, the little parts. If you have a large project, uh, break it up and when they're doing something either in class or you have them send something to you you have them check in with where they are you can already tell where they're going with it if it's an a b c d or f um, so you can just grade the parts and then at the end when they turn the whole thing you're done okay it's an easy once over you're good or you can do the different while they're working on something you're walking around you're checking I usually have my clipboard and I'm walking around and I'm checking and I'm checking and I'm seeing what they're doing I'm like okay it seems to be fine so when they turn in the final product I know what it's gonna be hey so it's easier that way instead of waiting until they're finished with everything and then a whole lot comes at me at one time and I'm stressed out okay break it up check the parts before the whole Hang around for the rest at the end of the video because I have two tips that's gonna make you that phenomenal teacher. Number three, using symbols. Now, um, I teach English, so or ELA language arts, so there's a lot of um, reading of essays going on or reading of passages, and there's a lot of writing um, going on for the kids. So initially, in the beginning of the year, there's a lot of reading on my part. Um, but I, I'm not an expert necessarily, but I do it so quickly now, it doesn't even phase me anymore. So I have, when I've read their paper and they have good things about the paper or bad things about the paper or an assignment, I put check marks for the good and I put little bullets for the, the stuff that they need to fix. So do I grade it then? I don't have to. Sometimes I do depending on the class and the type of class and how much instruction I've given. The, um, about that topic or, or, or that assignment and they weren't listening or they were but for the most part that's just me evaluating where you are and sometimes when I do actually grade that I give them a chance to revise it so I've given you the check marks you're good on those parts when you revise it when you retype it that's great give me that again but then the bullets you need to fix when you fix them you get your automatic A. I don't need to reread it again because I'm just looking for, okay, you didn't put the comma here, the underline here, whatever, and I've checked it for the most part. You've done it. Easy, great. I don't have to reread your essay. It's great. Now, some teachers do the composition book when they have five checks, so each, each journal entry, and then at the end of the week or end of the grading period or whatever, they collect all the the journals and they grade them then that's a lot to me that seems stressful let me know if it works for you i've never done that and there's way too many um math and misleading oh but miss i did it you just didn't check it and all this different stuff that's too confusing for me but if it works let me know some people put five check marks is an a three is a b and that's way too much work so um i've just put what you did right what you didn't do right fix it and you got an a all right so that's one thing you can do. Partner, grading, proofing, scoring, 
Uh, my AP kids love this. We we kind of move around. I, we do something when we do the multiple choice and we check them. We, you do it by yourself. Then you have a partner you do it with. Then the third time you do it with somebody else. And at the third time, that's the only column I'm grading because by then you should have all the answers right or wrong and then we'll figure it out. Whatever your grade is for the third column, we do it. If you need help with understanding what I just said, hit me up in the comments below and I'll get it to you. But um, that's something you can do. Have students look at each other's essays. It's practice for them and you get better at writing too. They get to, to practice, 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 and then you grade the final result. You don't have to grade every step of the practice. So um, rubrics, give them rubrics while they're working so that they'll understand that, hey, he wants me to put the heading here. He wants me to underline this and put this in quotation marks. I got this. It's easy for you when you give the rubric and you look at that and see what they did, they get the grade. Easy grading, all right? So. Those are my four hacks right now. Now, here are the two tips. Number one, I get a clipboard, and I think you should get a clipboard, especially if you are a high school teacher, get a clipboard, and I print up the roster. I have a roster of the kids per period. So um, depending on what it is, like this is one of the ways I grade discussions. I'm walking around, I'm listening to what they're saying, and I'm putting a, a, an asterisk or a grade by the student, by what I'm hearing. If they read, if they um, understood what was going on, I'm walking around and I'm checking off things as I'm walking around. I'm grading there. I don't have to wait until they're done with everything to turn everything into grade. That's how I grade discussions. Also, I provide a rubric for them. That's number two. They know that I have this to do and he gave me this time to do it and this is how it's done. Now, as I'm walking around, sometimes I'm checking or they can come to me and find out if they're doing it correctly. Yes, you are. No, you're not. Fix this. Don't fix that. You're good. And by the time that person has come to me, like a third time or whatever in class, the stuff is already graded. I already know what it is because we've talked about this several times. I don't have to sit and laboriously go over it because I've already graded it up here. That's one of the ways to quickly get grading done. Get your clipboard, get the roster, walk around, grade them on those things that they're doing. Even if it's a part of assignment, they're working on a group thing. Okay, this group is already going to get an A because I see it working out um, phenomenally. Or if it's a discussion, I hear that this kid is talking about this and they're on point. This one, okay, let me stop at this group and kind of probe him some more. Get some more out of him so he can move his grade. These are great tips. I need you to use them because I want you to be that great angry teacher. Thanks for coming to class today. Go out there and be great. Hey, let's go out there and teach. Yeah.